science. We get experimental yes. science. We're curious, non judgmental. What is going on? Is this a Lego beehive? I feel like that would be tricky. How do they keep it clean? Like, is there a lid that comes off? All right, well, let's just start with this one because it kind of gets at what the point of this next paper oh is. So Lego Beehive. So the paper, the Proceedings of the Royal Society B, Biological Sciences, oh entitled Evidence for Socially Influenced and Potentially Actively Coordinated Cooperation by Bumblebees. So these bees are the common bee that's studied in terms of like the behavior for cooperation. There's a lot of other groups. This is actually a disciple of the main guy. It's this, his name is like Lars Chiquitita, something like that. I took the ABBA song, okay? I don't know what his last name actually said but it's like chick is something he's in I think in Sweden and he is like the leader in on bumblebee behavior like every time that you have a new bumblebee behavior paper coming out it's him and this is one of his disciples papers going the bees build their own Lego I certainly hope so also the question do are the bees attracted to the colors of that Lego do you want to answer that or do you want me to answer, you answer that I would say probably not. Bees are attracted to certain colors when they're doing their pollinating thing, when they're collecting nectar and pollen. Generally, they're not too pleased with dark colors, so red or black, because it looks the same to them, gets them a little huffy. But normally, when you have a hive, you want it to be light colored. Number one, they don't find that offensive. And number two, it keeps the colony cool okay the study does involve lego bricks and one of their controls is running the experiment but with different color bricks do they behave differently no it, it doesn't seem like do colors of the hive attract bees more ask werewolf yeah so not not really not that i would think you want it light colored for temperature control uh and that's what i was saying dark colors we know dark colors tend to make them a little more aggravated so if you're going into an apiary where light colored or ideally white colored garments but i would be surprised if that played a factor. The only reason I would see color playing a role in their selection is if they were dark colors and it was causing too much heat buildup in the hive, and then I think they would leave the hive. But otherwise, I'd say probably not. It's not the exact same group, but again, it's the disciples. The idea that this is not a new thing, that there is this like interaction between bumblebees and cooperation and co-working. So sugar source in the center, and they're trained to take the balls to the sh this little goal area, and then they get a sugar reward. And what's really cool is there was naive observer bees that could watch this bee getting trained, but they couldn't interact, right? So they couldn't taste that there was a sugar reward. They just saw that, oh look, this bee is carrying this ball to this yellow circle. And then those bees started doing the same behavior. So it's like, it's a neat social learning interaction. So the way they did the training, y'all, is that they had a fake bee be the teacher, the, be the demonstrator, and then the, <laughs> the real bee was like, oh, okay. That's what I'm supposed to do, sure. Some other past experiments that were done as well, so that pulling this string and then getting a reward as well. There's a reward at the end. So T TF, what you can do is, the ones that are just watching, but not shown in this video, when you have the ones that are just watching and then you give them the opportunity to do the ball movement, they'll do it independent of the reward. So then it's, that's why it's that social transmission of information. Even if it's, there's a reward at the end, you could still be transmitting that like, hey, if we do this task, we'll get something good. Yeah, I would suggest that even if there's a reward at the end, it still counts as social transmission. Like it's still interesting. Because why is it that we teach each other things? Preferably, we're, we're doing it because it creates some kind of benefit. So a primate teaching another primate how to use a tool, like those sticks where they like dip into an ant's nest and get a bunch of ants out as a snack. That ant, that little stick of ants is their snack. It's their reward. It's doing all the good reward signaling in their brain. All those like dopamine was a benefit. 
And the same thing happens with this string pulling experiment. This was the other more recent social behavior study of the bumblebees, just again setting kind of the groundwork of all the things that they are able to be taught. And then we'll show off what they did, but I think this is like the more nuanced one because it's a lot of puzzle solving here, where it's like there's a particular order of things that they have to do in order to get to a food reward. So here again is a reward, but they have to do tasks to get to it. And what they a quick and dirty is that they find that the researchers like, oh, we actually have to give them a reward at each step. So you have to train them in stepwise movements in order for them to do these multi-piece puzzles. And where the new paper comes in is having more than one bee. It's not the same experimental setup, but it's a similar level of complexity. Okay. And so it's feeding in the question of in groups, in group training, how is that reflected in these complex puzzles when you have those two trained individuals together on yeah. the puzzles versus if you have you know, singularly trained ones, like how are the differences and how is like that information process. Okay. So, so this is before the bees getting trained, but there's your Lego and the bee knows that there's some kind of reward there. And so it okay. learns to push stuff out of the way. Push the Lego. Okay. Oh, look at them go. She's so powerful, chat. Push it. And then what do they do? They get a food reward. Yes. So again, the real quick and dirty is the question is if, okay, if two bees are trained together. Yeah what is their behavior like versus if they're trained alone and so they're so they're training the bees to move a lego mm -hmm. and the difference is do they train a bee solo or train multiple bees together and the multiple is in two okay and what they find it, the big thing of it is that there is a delayed response okay. so if you put the two bees together yes. after training yes. they wait for one another to do the activity together Oh. So if, if, if they both are needing to push this block, yeah. if you put the first one in, yeah. she won't go start doing it. There is a, I mean, eventually she will, okay. but there is a delayed response. The expectation is I'm going to wait for my buddy because we do this together. Yep. And, but if you train them by themselves mm -hmm. and put them in yeah. with another bee that was trained by itself, whichever one lands at the site is going to start pushing and it's not waiting for the other bee. So it's not that they're waiting for another individual right. necessarily. It's that during the training, if there is a cooperative element to it, they have this cooperation. But this is my question. Do you think they realize that they're capable of moving it on their own? If you leave the bee by itself long enough, that was duly trained, yes. it'll push it on its own. Okay, but... I guess my question is then the follow-up to that. If this bee has discovered, I've learned how to do this thing with my friend, it's probably easier if I do it with my friend. But I am capable of moving this thing on my own. If they test it again, is there still a delay? It's both ways. They did not do that test. But do you want, chat, do you understand why I'm asking this question? Is it possible that the bee, because of how they were trained, just doesn't realize that it's something that she can do by herself. If the only time this has ever worked is when there was another bee with her, maybe it's just one of those things she's looking for. Like, I go to get my coffee when the coffee shop has their big cafe open sign out, right? And so maybe I've just learned that to like go get my reward, which is the coffee, I have to wait for that coffee open sign. Did they do multiple Legos? If there are multiple Legos and two bees in there, do they go to the same yeah, Lego so, so that was, and work together? Yes, that video isn't pulled up, but the, so the, here are multiple Legos. Yes. So okay, so they pick the same. They pick the same one to yeah. work on. This is the first one that's released, and it's waiting for the friend. Okay. When they have a single trained bee, when they have that bee that was trained by herself to move this thing and they put a friend in here with her do they both also try to move See, the look, same look, look at how cool that is is there an element of cooperation without that training yes so there is. Okay. They did do that experiment but okay. this delay yes that you see doesn't happen right I get that but the other bee that's we'll joining come her to the will one, come yeah. to the one that she's working on that's very so there, there is some element of cooperation okay. that the animals have okay it's a little bit silly. And I'm like, yeah, but I really, really like the study. So, you know, that's why I thought it was kind of cool. And there's image here as well. They got this nice angled image. 
right here that I thought was super cutie patootie, where um, it's like the co-working of the two bees, and as they're co-working together, you can even see the Lego icon on top of the brick, and I'm like, no, oh, like, that's so cool and how well done, and, you know, it's, it's kind of neat to be able to have. If they could build, see, that's the thing, though, Dame Karen, I don't know if they could build with it because of connecting the bricks, like, that actually, like, hooking the two pieces together, the overhead pressure that you have to do to connect the two bricks, I wonder if that's too much of a connection. Like, that's that's almost too much force. No idea, but that's just a thought. So there were some studies beforehand that had taught these animals to play soccer. And it was, that was just kind of laying the foundation of what, like, has already been known about bees. And here, Wispy, it wouldn't be a competition. Or, I mean, I guess in the sense that they're they're going for the same resource, but not because they're trying to beat one another. It's that they're working together for it. And the way you can tell that is because if they're released individually on a delayed run, so if they're trained together, but one bee is put in first, and then a little after the second bee is put in that's when they start doing the task so if it was a competition like whoever is rushing to do it first then the first one that's released that would be the one that would pop out and do its do the pushing behavior but because it that female waits for the other one they're not actually competing with one another they're actually doing it together which is it's truly remarkable that this kind of study number one could be done and then number two is that we have the finding to be able to show it off i think it's super super cool to be beastie yeah there's a lot of bee jokes here just this is a video on bee behavior that was about two months ago and we covered the paper when it was released two months ago but i thought it would be important to kind of further set the stage of what exactly the point of this is like what was the existing knowledge that made us think that something like this could be done and could work exactly too but as long as you're being yourself this ball arena this is the first bit of evidence that has been demonstrated where in this arena there were just balls just sitting there they had no reward associated with them the bees just walked past through a room with these balls to get to a food resource and some of the bees would stop grab onto them and start rolling around on the ball like there was no point to it there was no reward for playing with this ball and so it was a the research researchers said that it was a demonstration of insect play which i think is really cool that it's just like they just hopped on and they started rolling around now there might be some point of it in so far as learning like a lot of creatures learn through play so maybe it was some kind of coordination behavior but the point is there wasn't a direct output like the researchers were not like here roll around on top of this ball and we'll give you some sugar like there was no direct output from it and so that's suggesting some flavor of insect play which is, again, really, really cool. So again, the big crux of this is that it's a two-step puzzle box that cannot be solved by a single piece. So like, it's not, it's not gonna work by accident. Like, you have to be trained for it. Okay, so this is actually the lead researcher, not behind the paper that we're talking about now. This is the precursor. So this was the last big bee paper where they were looking at bumblebees and their behavior in pushing and getting past certain puzzles which was really cool. So this is a two-step experiment. The bees needed to move the blue doorway in, and then they needed to push the red button forward. And that was those the two elements that they had to do. And what it turns out was the bees couldn't do learn to do both without an intermediate reward. So you have to teach them to do the two steps. And then if there was a bee watching the bee being trained, just by visual cues, they would learn what to do. And that's what they're arguing is passing of cultural information. Did I say it backwards? Sorry. Blue out of the way, then down red. And that's the cool part, is that if they copied a trained bee, then you didn't need the rewards in our mitten. They just copied the behavior of the trained animal, and then they were able to solve the puzzle. They, that's a good question, Sam. They did not, there was not any fake bee in this experiment. And I don't know why. That would have been a really good alternative because they write they have demonstrated that the fake bee is sufficient to train them to use like the little soccer ball to like the particular target. I don't know, Sam, why they didn't do that. That is a really, really good question. This is important because it is a study of cooperation. It is cooperative behavior. It is a way to study cooperative tasks where the, again they're trained together it's a cooperative task that they're trained on as soon as you establish this paradigm which is what this study does you can start asking about the neuroscience the genetics of cooperation and what controls cooperation what leads to cooperation what are the factors that are important on a molecular level for cooperation there are other animals that we know also cooperate you can think of mammals for example you've chimps you've got mice you've got all these other creatures but anything that's like higher order like that 
is much harder to study than it is something, unquote, simple like this insect.